Hello. So I'm Becca and I live in this van. I could be wrong, but I feel like I live van life a fairly in a fairly different way than most people. So I wrote I wrote down a list of all the reasons that I feel like is it, or all the stereotypes that I feel are for van lifers and which ones I don't typically meet. I love following all the people that do like camping and stuff like that, but I know there has to be people out there like me that want to like do this, but they don't do certain things and they're like, ugh, does that, would that really fit into my lifestyle? You know, I guess an introduction. I am 34 years old. I've been doing van life for since December, ugh, December of 2022. I've since I, ever since I was little, little, I wanted to be a semi driver and and live in the back of my semi, like make the semi house, and um, not to make money, obviously, just to live in the in the semi. And all my life, I've been like jealous of people that lived in their van, lived in their car, um, lived like there was a lady down the street when I bought a house in Washington who. They built out a bus and I was so, I couldn't even drive down that street because I was so jealous. And when I graduated college, which I was very fortunate to be able to go to, I spent, like I came, moved back home, well, moved back home uh, from in Colorado and I uh, <laughs> told my parents, if I don't get a job in three months, I'm out of here. I don't, I think I had like $3,000 from working in college and I packed up and left. <laughs> and the left side of my car was my bed and the right side was all my other shit. Living in vehicles has has been something that I've been doing since I was about 22. Uh, I went on a big road trip then and ended up living in Connecticut. I do pottery full time as a job uh, that started in 2014 after a few regular you know, service industry jobs. And during the whole time that I lived in Washington, I would travel for shows and live in my van uh, just because that's what we did. That's the kind of lifestyle that me and my friends always had because we're poor, <laughs> we, you know, because we didn't have any place to stay. I've never stayed in a hotel. Wait, I have stayed in a hotel once by myself. And that was when I moved to Indiana and I had a cat with me and it was snowing. Yeah. I mean, I've just never been able to afford to pay for a hotel. So I've always just lived in the back of my car. Even when I had, even when I owned a house, I would go on trips down to Oregon on the coast and I would, yeah, I would just kind of like sleep in Walmart parking lots, sleep in hotel parking lots. I like to sleep in hotel parking lots if you're sleeping in a car car because nobody knows you're there. They think you're in the hotel and then you get breakfast which is nice. I lived in Indiana. Well, I lived in Washington for eight years, bought a house in 2014, sold the house in 2018, bought a studio, well, started a pottery studio and then ended up going into like a pretty deep depression and ended up selling everything off in 2021 and then moved to Indiana and worked as a production potter in Indiana for a couple of years. And then did my own thing. And then uh, in 2022, I wait. Yeah. Wait. I moved to Indiana in 2020. And then in 2022, uh, like December, so basically 2023, moved in, uh, moved into the van. If you look at any of my other videos, you know that it's not built out. It's just a hot mess, honestly. Me and my buddy, me and my best friend from college, her husband, they have three kids. And while I was there for Christmas break, it took us two weeks to put in insulation, insulation, a subfloorboard, and like the studs. On each side of the wall, there's two horizontal studs and then we put that purple foam insulation all over everything and those are my walls why don't you cover the walls becca well i don't know 
<laughs> you know, I could cover them with like fabric and stuff, but at some point I don't look at my van that much. I'm, I'm usually outside or the only time I'm in the van on a consistent level is when I'm working at my table in there or when it's hot as fuck and I'm laying on the bed under a fan. But Regardless, I thought I'd get into the reasons why I don't fit the stereotype and why you don't have to either. Uh, number one reason, I don't fit the van lifer stereotype. I don't hike. <laughs> I never had, I, like, I have hiked, obviously, um, but I never will again. I have no cartilage in my right ankle and walking on uneven pathways is extremely painful for me. And it will be extremely painful for me for the rest of my life. So, uh, and for all of you that are like, you're fat. I could lose some weight, but also I couldn't, you know, I could just be happy with myself and accept the fact that uh, this is my life right now. You know, it's pretty great. I have a pretty good life, you know. Second reason, I am slightly afraid of fires and forests. I'm not going to lie. I grew up in Colorado and yeah, bear, Smokey the Bear, man. I've always been afraid of fires. I've always been afraid of firemen. Uh, like when I was a kid, I was afraid of firemen. Just not a fan of fires, uh, which is ironic because I do pottery for a living. It's mostly that I just don't want to set trees on fire, which I've almost done. So um, I've also set a dumpster on fire and that was on my, my forever not to do list. You know, I'm good. I do love s'mores though. And a like campfire hot dog. Delish. Next one, Tevas. I do have one pair of Tevas. Typically I'm a, uh, you know, I, I like to just wear flip flops. P.S. Costco, 15 bucks. Still, pff, fucking great. Tevas. I do have one pair of Tevas. The reason I bought them was because I went to Disney World for a week with three children, but they gave me blisters. So I don't, I haven't worn them like since. I feel like I need to wait for maybe like the winter so I can wear them with socks because I'm 34. Like I don't care about fitting in. It need, they need some more like movement, you know, but, but blisters suck. And I'm still a little traumatized from the Disney World trip. So for a lot of reasons, not just the Tevas. <laughs> Even though I am a great cook, I eat like a child. I, because there's a very specific reason though. I am supremely depressed right now. And I also have ADHD. So like for breakfast, I usually eat like one of those kid yogurt pouches and like a cereal bar and and probably some like slices of mango. <laughs> and I eat a lot of Kraft mac and cheese. It's a dollar. I eat a lot of ramen. Oh, 10 cents, you know, or it used to be 10 cents. I don't know what the cost is now. I buy it at Aldi. Obviously, I get my protein in and I try to eat as healthy as possible. But I just don't have the mental capacity for doing like these beautiful like home cooked meals in a van. It's fucking hard to cook in a van. To be fair, I love cooking when camping. Uh and it's basically the same. So there is that like I think that once you set up camp and you get a uh you know your stove outside and you can cook outside it's a lot easier. But yeah, so it's just you know mental health struggles are hitting me pretty hard and that is something that I would prefer not to worry about is myself criticizing my my own self, me criticizing me for eating Kraft mac and cheese or a yogurt pouch. You know, that's just the way it is. Yeah, that's this season right now. Love to get out of this season soon. I don't know what number we're on, but next reason is I do pottery for a living. So that means that right now I'm not making pretty much any money from anything digitally. I don't have a remote job. Benefit of that is I don't need internet. But yeah, so that means like I have a tent right over there that I set up that has my studio in it. And I'll be living in this on this property for four months, three to four months. And this is a friend's property and they have a kiln down there that I can use if I need to. I also have a kiln. I have everything that I need to make anything that I need. Uh, well, unless it's like giant, but uh, because the kiln's small, obviously. When you do a job that requires shipping, making something in person, water, power, it also limits you to mobility for a certain amount of time. That means that most 
of this, most of what's under my bed is pottery. So what others may have in hiking, camping, rock climbing, water activities. I don't have any of that stuff. I do have a hammock. That's very important in my life. I have pottery supplies. The third reason I feel like I don't fit the stereotype, it's really personal how you buy your van and build out your van. You know, if you want to do van life, typically I feel like the trajectory is to buy a used vehicle and then spend most of the money on the build. You know, like maybe buy one for like $15,000, $20,000 and then spend like 10K on the build. At least that's what I've seen, 10 to 20K on the build. Uh, I flipped that and reversed it. I am what one could, could and should consider cash for just because I do make a lot less money than most people by choice. I saved up like a, like $4,000, maybe it was $5,000, like pay the down payment to the van and I bought it brand new. Uh, there's a few reason why it's, reasons why I bought it brand new and that is I'm single, plan to be single for a very long time. I don't have family in the states that I live in. I do have friends everywhere because I have a very big pottery community. When you've lived away from your family for such a long time. My parents live in Colorado and I've lived in Washington and Indiana for most of my like after college life. You find out that sometimes there's just things you don't want to deal with. And one of those things I don't want to deal with is a car that breaks down for a reason that I don't know. This is not my first van that I've purchased. Not the first van that I've, I've had three vans. Went from small, medium, large. I had an Astro um, that I got for free actually because somebody bought it for like nothing and then gifted it to me but I had to fix it so I had to put a bunch of money into it to get it up and running and then I ended up giving that away to somebody and then I bought a Ram 1500 a Dodge Ram 1500 Mac gray black wheels spray painted that a, an old friend had or he's still friend but a friend had uh, and it was his art van and then he sold it to me and then it became my art van uh, for shows, slept in that and lived in that. It was done. It was, you know, built out a little bit, but then I ended up like tearing everything out and then it just had like insulation in the ceilings for like four years. But anyway, I bought it for $2,000 and ended up putting like $10,000 into it. So I've had a lot of experience with fans that just don't work that well. And I would like as a single woman, even though I know a little bit about cars, I don't know enough. I'm happy to buy new. And also buying new decreased my interest rate monthly payment. I just transferred my apartment payment over and I've been paying more on it so I can pay it off quicker. Once I got that figured out, by the way, the van cost $53,000. I'm down to like 25, I think. I should have it paid off in the next three years. The van outside is brand new and the engine is brand new. The van inside is a hot garbage mess. So it costs, the initial cost, was less than $2,000. That's with a $1,000 battery <laughs> power station. But I think that they probably the overall cost as time has passed is about probably like 5,000 if you add all the little tiny things. I just did a quick calculation. It was 3,500 for like the bigger stuff, but that doesn't like include my tent and my hammock. But any upgrades I've done have been free pretty much. If it was like a structural upgrade, like for the bed, and except for the bed the bed was like 100 and yeah and like the solar panels came a year after the van did it's just been kind of like a slow build i feel like a lot of van lifers want to get it done right away and i think that sounds great i have been dealing with a lot of burnout and that burnout has resulted in me not caring about what it looks like on the inside and but i think that it's better for me because you know it, I can see what I like. Everything can be taken out with a couple screws. This whole thing could be emptied out in a day easy and put back in a day easy if I wanted to. So that's really nice. We put it in because I was like, this is going to be temporary. And in three months, I'm going to make like $10,000 this winter. And I made like one. <laughs> and in three months, I'm going to build it out. And the second thing, the second thing that makes me not a stereotypical, I would say not a millionaire van lifer, you know, the ones that like buy those hundred thousand dollars vans, like the ones that the van is in their like primary home or it is, but they have like a really good job, man. 
jelly. Uh, <laughs> the the other thing is that I have absolutely zero interest in building this motherfucker out myself. I have proved myself enough in my past. I know how to build the van out. I could do it. Um, I have most of the tools to do it. Literally just have no interest. I've lived a very, not wild, but I've lived a very exuberant life. It's been great. And I've done a lot of shit. I've built out kitchens. I've done all the things that... <sighs> I always used to say that by the time I was 30, I've done a lot of the stuff that people do by the time they're 40. And except for getting married, which bless and having children also bless. I am not missing anything by not building it. You know, I would just really like it to be built well and to be built to be finished because I'm not a hundred percent finisher. I'm a 90% finisher. I have severe ADHD and always have diagnosed when I was six, this motherfucker is just not going to get done if I do it. So I would rather pay somebody to do it. And that doesn't, it doesn't have to be professional. Like I was considering paying my friend Brandon to it, who helped me do this in the first place. And that would give them something to do. And they would love for me to stay at their house because, you know, childcare. But yeah, I, w- I would love to do that. So the goal is to save, uh, hopefully once I get this paid off, I can save 10 grand and, and build it out the way that I actually want it with the studio in the back and everything kind of having a place. Oh, This is one that I feel is not necessarily a stereotype. It's just something I've noticed watching a lot of videos because I do I do try to watch a bunch of van lifers. I don't drink any hot liquids like I don't really drink coffee or tea. I do love I do love a hot chocolate, uh, but it has to have copious amounts of marshmallows in it. And preferably a a fair amount of whipped cream. Uh, No, I'm not a coffee or tea drinker. So like morning routines are just not really my thing. I'll get out of bed if it's, you know, a thousand degrees outside um, because I have to. But I am I'm much more a night person, which uh, is not great for van life, by the way. Um, Really, really, really sucks. It could be better. I like to work at night and it's really hard to work at night when um, the lights aren't (laughs) the best, you know, but I will end this video with things that I do agree with and resonate with in the van life community. And that is, I love traveling. However, I do travel and then stay for like a long period of time. I would love to own like a piece of land, preferably one in Michigan, one in in like Arizona, Utah, one for the winter, one for the summer. I love living with like solar because every because of my lifestyle and because I do go to people's houses so frequently, having solar really makes it so that I don't have to depend on people. You know, usually the only thing I'm depending on is water. I'm like that weirdo that I'm, you know, I'm like a weirdo. So I'm always like, are you, do you have a well or are you on city? <laughs> because if it's well water, I typically like sweet. That means unlimited water. Also, I should mention that whenever I come to people's house, like I'm going to be here for four months, I usually do a work trade. So if I can, um, if they'll let me. I'm here at my friend's studio right now and I will be working from nine to like four every or six. I can't remember. Nine to something every Tuesday to help out in the studios. And that's completely fine for me. And I love that. It makes me feel like I'm contributing in a way. And I think it helps them get some work done in the studio, you know? So I lend out my services. You know, I've been doing pottery for 15 years. So I would hope that me coming into somebody's studio and helping is not a hindrance, more of a help. Uh, Yeah. But yeah, I think that, oh, also another thing that I identify with is I do have a cat. (laughs) And a lot of van lifers have cats and I think the only difference is that my cat has usually has free reign wherever he goes. So there's a cat door on the back of my van and I have a attractive collar on him and he just kind of, he knows that this is home. But if I keep him in the ha- in the ha- in the house, if I keep him in the van all night, he whines and sh- it's so fucking annoying. So it's just easier to let him go out. And he, he usually, he usually just climbs up on the top of the van and sleeps on the van, honestly. No, he's great. He's basically a dog. We go on walks. I do have a cat. And that has been a huge part of my van life experience is like going places with him. Oh, also, I realized another thing that is opposing. I have dinosaur bed sheets on my twin bed. Let me tell you, if you are a van lifer and you have a twin bed or a full bed, you are missing an entire market 
of kids' sheets. <laughs> they're the fucking best. Okay? Also, they're great quality. Mine are, at least. I don't... If you want the link to those sheets, let me know, because I just signed up for an Amazon influencer thingy. I can get a commission. Yeah, that's, I think that's about it. Yeah, anyway, I love it. No, I don't plan on getting out of it anytime soon. It was a very calculated decision on my part, and don't regret it at all. You know? You know, you know, you know? Yeah. Lloyd, come here. Come here. Come on. Come on. That bitch just laid down again. <laughs> Come on! I'm not gonna get him. You can look at my other videos. He looks very comfortable right now.